Hey, everybody. Welcome to the LISD podcast, episode number two, where once again we're coming to you from the beautiful Tech West studios here in uh, Louisville, Texas. And as you know, what our goal and our objective is, is it's always to bring you something that hopefully you didn't know about LISD. So we hope to do that today. My name is Bill Lee. I'm the director of marketing for Louisville ISD. And do we have a surprise for you today? We have, we are so honored that we are joined by the LISD Chief Technology Officer, Mr. Brian Kolbeck. And not only we're we blessed to have him today, we're so blessed to have someone of Brian's caliber who's steering the ship of our technology because it's such a huge deal. It's just such a huge ordeal for, for LISD. You know, Brian's uh, bio could go on till tomorrow. Uh, he's got a resume a mile long, but I tell you what, I'm going to read you um, what I have Which uh, before we get started on here. Brian served on the Texas K-12 through CTO Council Board of Directors as past chairperson and was very involved in the Texas Student Data Privacy Alliance, including the development of of a common data privacy agreement. Earlier this year, Brian was named the Texas CTO of the Year by Texas Educational Technology Leaders, and just last March was named the Consortium for School Networking CTO of the Year, which is also national recognition. He received his BS, his Bachelor of Science degree in Technology Education, and his Master's in Career and Technical Education from the University of Wisconsin, Stout, Brian and his wife have two children who just so happen to attend LISD. So, Brian, to get things started, I like to always kind of first start things out with what I call the elevator pitch. You know what an elevator pitch is, right? For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about with an elevator pitch, you're on an elevator, you've got 60 seconds, 90 seconds, a minute, whatever it takes to tell somebody what you do. Once they see your little name tag and they go, what is that? What do you do? Boom, you get to tell them. So... Tell us a little bit about what a CTO is and what is sure. your responsibility, Brian. Sure. So a CTO is, is really, and, it, and I guess I'm going to say this too, I think regardless of industry, a CTO is somebody that is a leader. And, uh, you know, when you look at like the pillars of the job, it really comes down to like leadership and vision, setting strategy for the district. Um, and then also looking at a CTO has to be very knowledgeable about the environment that, that you're working in. So in this case, our sector being K-12, obviously when I think of um, technology in K-12, I really look at it in two different levels. I look at it in a level of instructional, like what do you need to run the business of instruction? But then, you know, we are a business. We're one of the larger employees or employers rather in, in Denton County. We have payroll. We have... I think, I think we're the largest employer. I believe we are the County. largest, yes. But the... the the operation side of that, you, you have to operate the district. So you have to be knowledgeable about both areas. And then, you know, you have to be a technologist. You have to be strong in technology. Um, and that is coming down to the day-to-day, you know, experiences of the users, the systems that you have to run, um, you know, storage, networks, all of it. So it that's really what a, a chief technology officer is. And I think you know, specific to what I do in the district, I um, I am on the district leadership team. I work closely with our superintendent, Dr. Rogers, interface regularly with our board of trustees. And looking at like the structure of our IT department, I I oversee basically four different divisions. Uh, the, one of the, the first division is technical services. And that's, I, I like to think of that as like the stuff. It's the, it's the end user stuff that, that people are using, the computers, iPads for the kids, printers, um, all the stuff that we have out in the, out in the field. And, and in our case, we're, we're supporting right around 60,000 iPads. And obviously we have a lot of other, you know, computers that aren't iPads in the district as well. But just to give you some idea of scale, uh, so that all lives in the technical services area. And then we have our information services group, which handle all of the uh, basically enterprise applications. So when we think of enterprise applications, it's it's what I was saying before. Some of it's on the instructional side, so our student information system, all of the instructional resources that are digital that we use, all of that has to be provisioned and account set up and provided specific access. And then, you know, operationally, we have systems like payroll and time t- timekeeping and 
you know, security controls and things like that. So that all happens in our information services group as well as training. Just like a business would have corporate trainers, we have trainers here in that division as well. And then we have our network infrastructure and cybersecurity group. So when I think of that group, I think of basically the folks that they're laying the highway. All of this stuff that I mentioned before has to run on this infrastructure, has to run on this highway of networks. So that group um, handles, you know, providing that pathway as well as when I think about the cybersecurity side of it, it's like, you know, going down a road or going down a toll toll rate tollway. That's your path, but you have signs, you have regulations, you have maybe you got to stop for a, a light or a toll or something like that. So we we they set up the controls around the cybersecurity as well. And then um, in my current role, I also oversee our instructional materials and technology warehouses as well. So all of the things that are coming in from a receiving perspective, as well as you know, when we have a large adoption for you know instructional materials that all is under under my division as well that makes me tired just thinking about <laughs> all the things that you're responsible for and you know and you mentioned cybersecurity, and it, obviously what a huge topic that is it these is days and you know they they've got a new cybersecurity group uh, or uh, uh, training program here at, at cte yep with our career center so we're really excited we, we need to do another program about that someday because that's a huge it huge is thing. and it's such a cool opportunity for students it, isn't it the, i mean the and, field and, is so and the future is just yeah demanding. And it's just it's kind of unfortunate unfortunately there's going to be mm-hmm. such a need, and it's just going to get more and more and more. But fortunately for students uh, of the caliber that we have at LSD, what a great opportunity that that, it is. That, that that gives them. So to make a long story short, for us at home, when our Internet goes out at home, it's a big deal. For you, if the Internet goes out with LSD, it's a big deal. It, it is, and I think on the, the part with technology, it's so pervasive. It's touching every aspect of, of, of the district. When you think about um, – Students showing up in class just to do attendance. Teachers, you know, connecting to the internet to project content. Or students are accessing our learning management system, Canvas. Even as simple as you know, getting on a bus, looking at routes. Where is the bus? Using the apps that that locate. So it's it it, it truly is, you know, this mechanism that allows us to operate the business and deliver the business, which is you know, instruction and and student learning. Absolutely amazing. Now. There's so many different ways we could go with this Mm -hmm. today, but we just don't have the time. There's so much that I'd like to talk to you about. But the one thing that I think is so paramount, Brian, that I know we've talked about before and everybody's talked about, uh, when the pandemic hit, it (laughs) was just, of course, nobody saw it coming. Right. You know, we've heard that. Uh, But I don't think people really understand that it's really a miracle when you think about it, what you guys were able to pull off in such a short period of time. And, and I understand that uh, I want you to talk a little bit about that. And, sure. and, and, and so let's take, take us back to, I believe, 2017, I guess, when there were some things there that kind of started the process to kind of help, help you guys being prepared for that. Sure. That right? I mean, so certainly 2017 was a, a very big milestone for the district as well as, you know, specifically in, in technology. And what I'm referencing is, is basically our, our community providing support through our bond referendum to you know, provide the funding we needed for technology. And that really gave us funding to keep, you know, investing in the technology infrastructure, as well as technology, you know, access for our students and staff. And when you think about uh, response to the pandemic, it is all about access. And it that set us up, you know, leaps and bounds above you know, some of our other surrounding districts, you know, some some districts did not have, you know, devices for students. And, and really, you know, probably on the positive side going into, into that spring break of 2020, we had a, a, about a one-week runway, but we were able to basically flip, flip our operations from what would be traditional, you know, brick, you know, a, a brick-and-mortar operation to completely online. And we would not have been able to do that without the infrastructure investment that, that we made in, as a district. And then I think the access side... You know, what was really cool, really, in, in last year, you know, we started the school year completely virtual, that any student in LISD that needed a device, or a hotspot for that matter, had one. And, you know, now looking back, that is one major accomplishment. And it was, it was that the planning that went into that, you know, 2017 bond, plus obviously having the, um, the mechanisms to, to maneuver quickly when the pandemic happened, positioned us to be, I think, about as successful as we could be in response to the pandemic. 
absolutely incredible. I still look back on that and just, just, you know, it's just amazing how you guys pulled that off. So you mentioned hotspots, and I know mm-hmm. most of, most of our viewers out there, maybe not all, but understand a little bit about the hotspot technology. But you guys took it to a whole nother level. Tell us a little bit about the technology uh, that that our viewers could relate to that that played a role during that. Sure, and and it's it's really I'll talk a little bit about the hotspots. But to me, there, there's a lot of different technologies that fit into this. But specifically to the hotspot, it's it's about access, right? So when you're when you're trying to or have to pivot into a remote learning environment, you have to have access outside of the building. So one, one of the things that we had done, even pre, pre uh, you know, the pandemic, we were participating in the Sprint One Million project. So that allowed us to provide, you know, hotspots to kids that needed them specifically in the high schools. But we had a big, you know, need yet in the middle school and elementary. And I would say high school too, because, you know, it's a different um, animal needing to have access to maybe do homework occasionally versus completely online. So the demand was much, much higher. But um, we participated in the uh, a program through the state of Texas called Operation Connectivity, which allowed us to get hotspots for families that needed it. And then we also were able to buy additional um, devices, which were iPads, that allowed us to basically, as I said before, any student that needed a device had a device. And I think, you know, it, it's, it's access is one key and I think in addition, you know, in the interim before we got the hotspots, we set up, I think right around 30 um, of our buildings, we actually put out exterior hotspot or exterior Wi-Fi. So we worked with our communications department, set up signs. And I saw it, you know, as I was on campus too, parents were pulling up and they were connecting and getting access to the resources they needed. They didn't have to go pull up in front of a Starbucks anymore. They could actually pull up in front of one of our 69 campuses. And they were. So I think that was a a quick, quick response. We were able to, you know, use a lot of the technology that we ended up taking some of it out of our gyms and cafeterias where, you know, nobody was in there. So we were trying to repurpose it and and get get connection up. And then, you know, so access. I'm sorry. Is that still up? Is that are all those still yes, uh, in, yep, those in, are still, in effect? Those are still up, still and I think we've, we've realized other benefits around that. Absolutely. So you that's kind of sure. that's going to stay. So if you're you know outside, or if you have a learning activity outside, oh, doing the attendance during a fire drill, things like that, where you have that 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 access, it's it's important. So access is key. Having you know access is really the you know internet access as well as access to devices which we were able to to do, and then the the other really two big pillars are you know access to resources digital resources, so we use a a, a single sign on um, solution that basically that's where students go it's called the L Hub where they access applications and we have um, believe it or not over a hundred applications in there provisioned already depending on what grade level a kid is or what courses they have. So when we go through like um, an adoption process for a, for a curriculum resource, almost always at this point, there's a digital version of it. So we, we had a lot of that stuff already set up ahead of time. We obviously did more uh, in response to the pandemic, but the, the total lift was so much less because of the work we had already done which was really, really great. We were several years already into uh, the implementation of our learning management system, which is Canvas, which played a huge role in students and teachers interacting. And I think, um, you know, we needed to bridge a gap for communication. So we implemented uh, WebEx for a communication platform. And I just actually just gave a, a, a report to the board here this past, uh, ba- uh, past week or so. And in last semester, this would have been the spring of, of last school year, we had over 300,000 hosted m- meetings by our staff only. And, and out of that, that's over, there was over 10.5 million minutes of meetings. So, and then in addition to that, with WebEx Teams, which basically gave a collaboration space for everybody uh, at, with every class they're in in, in, um, in our student information system, where teachers, at that point, teachers were uh, able to m- be moderators of those spaces. There were over, I think I jotted it down, there were over 21 million messages. So that was a, amazing. It is. It, that was a communication platform we didn't have up prior to the pandemic. And that's continued to be used this school year as well. So I think we grew a lot and learned a lot. So it was really around access, which is internet devices, access to you know digital resources so you can continue the learning. And then obviously teacher 
teachers being able to successfully know how to use the technology and work with kids remotely, I think, is what helped us get through that. Kind of leads right into this next thing about being prepared. It sounds like that it was a huge learning curve. Didn't see it coming. What you guys pulled off, absolutely amazing. So how are you set for God forbid that something like this happens again. I mean, we're, right. we're trying to hopefully come out of this thing soon, but well, at the at the moment we're we're sitting, I think, as 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 good as we can. In fact, I would say we're you know we're not out of it completely. We've been in situations where we've had to, you know, close down a classroom, you know, this semester already. So I think having the technology already out there and in place, we've been able to you know shut down a classroom and go remote without missing any days of instruction. So just having that flexibility is is unbelievable. I'm even thinking outside of the pandemic, you know, last year with the crazy w- winter weather, um, you know, if we wouldn't have had, uh, you know, power issues, very likely we could have done some remote learning during that time as well. So I think it, it ultimately gives you flexibility that you don't otherwise have unless you have access. So I think in the, in, in the interim, our, um, we're, we're sitting pretty good, but just like any technology, it's got a shelf life. Right, and it and yeah. it depreciates and needs to be yeah. replaced. So we're in the planning phases of of what we're going to need to do to replace that technology down the road. Okay, that's that's just so awesome. I mean, it, it's just amazing how how that had all worked in the timing and and just kind of where it brought us today. So so talk a little bit about the um, let's talk about the future. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about what technology. Where, where's technology going? Where are we going with this? And, and what ways can we look in the future that technology is going to help us even better educate our students? Yeah, it, 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 to me, it comes down again to establishing access first. It, it's, it's to a point where it, you just have to have access to, to, you know, run the business of education. So I think I'm just going to put an assumption there that that access is there. So assuming the access is there, I think what it lends itself to is more flexibility in the instructional environment. And what I mean by that is, you know, even even before the pandemic, we had our virtual learning um, academy, and that give gives students the ability to take some classes, you know, virtually and online. Well, obviously, you know, technology becomes this conduit to get access to the course, to the teacher, the collaboration when you're, when you're remote. So I think we're going to see, see more of that. Um, I think also looking at, um, you know, being able to differentiate better for, for students. So when, when you look at all of these different instructional resources, um, looking at where, where kids might need an intervention, well, we might have a combination of tools that, that can be used uh, to help maybe bring a student up to grade level. And all, all of these systems, too, have data. Right, they have data, so you can track it. You can look at analysis and try to determine where needs are before it's a real, you know, really serious need, and try to have interventions earlier. So I think technology has been, a, I think, a great equalizer. And to be an equalizer, you have to have equitable access. So again, like I said before, it comes down to access. But I think if you have that access, it's going to give you flexibility. It's going to give you the ability to differentiate, and I think you know allow more. Um, learning opportunities for kids that probably aren't aren't there today well i think i think we've just heard um just one more thing that sets lisd apart from everybody else out there it's just there's so many things out and i get the opportunity to talk a lot about those things that set us aside set us apart and what a major thing this is that really sets us apart so well, Brian, I want to thank you so much for being with us today. I know you're your welcome. schedule has been absolutely crazy and just given us a better insight to the extraordinary world of technology within uh, within LSD. Before we go, mm-hmm. um, how can people get in touch with you? Do you want them to contact you, your department? Uh, there there will probably will be some questions that people would like to ask. Sure. We, I would uh, suggest people go to our technology department page off of the LISD website, which is uh, www.lisd.net. And you'll go under departments and you'll see technology there. We have a lot of information about um, the programs that we have as well as we have um, good contact us sections where depending on what the question is, some of them route directly to me, some of it uh, route to people on our team. Um, so that's a really good good place to go. And any question that um, gets resp- or that gets entered through that mechanism ultimately uh, can get routed back to me. Great, great. Thanks so much, Brian. We really appreciate you coming out. We really do. Well, thanks and thanks to all me. of you for being with us today. So from all of us here, our student crew and everybody here at Tech West and from everybody at LSD, until next time, have a great day. Thanks, so much.